When setting up your YMAB budget, I recommend starting off really simple and only using three category groups. And today we are going to talk about what those category groups are. What's up everybody, I'm Alicia and I'm a personal finance coach who is passionate about helping people break that paycheck to paycheck cycle so they can finally find some peace of mind when it comes to their money. All right, so one thing that I absolutely love about YNAB is they give you so much freedom to set up your dashboard any way you want to. You can have endless category groups, endless line items. I mean, maybe it's a little bit too much of a good thing. So I recommend starting off really simple and you might find that the three category groups I recommend today will work for you long term. But either way, I think that they are just the perfect category groups to start off with. So let's go ahead and take a look. So when you first set up your YNAB budget, this is how your dashboard is automatically going to look. YNAB has already given us a good number of category groups and line items under each of them. And this is a totally fine place to start. I think if you look at this and it makes sense and you don't really want to change things around, that's totally fine. I, however, think that it could be a little simpler. And so let me just show you what category groups I recommend setting up when you're first getting started. So this bills group, I think is great. I wouldn't change very much about it. I would love to change the name though, because some bills are monthly, some bills are bi-monthly, some bills are annual. And so I like to separate our monthly bills from bills that you don't necessarily pay every month. And I'll get to those non-monthly bills in a second. But for now, I think it's great just to have a category group called monthly bills. So I'm going to go ahead and change bills by right-clicking it. And I'm just going to add monthly in front of that. It might seem a little nitpicky, but stick with me. Okay, so we've got our monthly bills. We're going to go ahead and keep rent, mortgage, electricity, water, internet, cell phone. These are all things that you typically pay monthly. So I'm not going to fuss about it. We're just going to leave it. And then you get down here to these four other category groups. We've got frequent, non-monthly, we've got goals, and we've got quality of life. And these just seem a little bit vague to me. And when you're first getting started, that can feel a little overwhelming. So I want to be more specific and simplify these just a little bit. For instance, frequent and quality of life, or even frequent and non-monthly, these can all just kind of seem like they intermingle a little bit. So I want to change frequent and I want to rename it day to day spending. Okay. I'll press okay. And when I talk day-to-day -day spending, what I'm talking about is really those things that you're spending day-to-day -day throughout the month just to live your life. It's not necessarily stuff that you're spending on money on every single day. It's just money that you are spending for specific things throughout the month to live your life. So groceries, eating out, transportation, yes. I would also argue that hobbies, we're spending money on our hobbies throughout the month, entertainment. I mean, depending on where you are in your financial wellness journey, these are all things that you are spending money on each month, maybe at random intervals, but it's still regular day-to-day -day spending. So I actually want to go ahead and get rid of quality of life. We're not actually getting rid of your quality of life. We're just putting it in a different place. We're making it day-to-day. -day. <laughs> so we're going to delete that. Okay, and now we're left with non-monthly and goals. And again, these are two category groups that I think could be just simplified and put together. If you take a look at what we have under here, we've got home maintenance, auto maintenance, gifts, vacation, education, and home improvement. These are typically things that we're not spending money on every single month. Um, these are actually things that most people are having to save up for in order to cover them. And so I would actually like to call each of these items instead of non-monthly, I want to call them sinking funds because these are items in which we are hopefully setting aside money for each month in preparation for actually going on that vacation, which I'm moving up to sinking funds or paying for, you know, that class at that college or whatever education we're trying to get and then covering that deck that we're wanting to build in our backyard. So I actually think 
these could all be in the same sinking funds group. Also, if you do have bills, um, like I was talking about before, that are not necessarily paid every single month, say you pay your insurance premium every six months, I would put that under sinking funds. I would make that something that you're setting money aside each month, saving up for it. So when that payment comes six months down the road, you have it ready to go. So it's a sinking fund, not necessarily a bill. Does that make sense? So there you have it. I went ahead and got rid of goals by right clicking it and pressing delete. And these are the three categories that I recommend setting up in your YNAB budget. And there you have it. Those are the three category groups that I recommend starting with when setting up your you need a budget budget. Of course, you might want to change it around a little bit to fit your needs, add some if you'd like to, that's totally fine. But I do feel like this is a really great, simple way to start. Also, if you are familiar with our YouTube channel and our budgeting advice, you may have noticed that the category groups I recommended setting up are the same as the bank accounts that I recommend opening. If you are new to us and you're curious about these bank accounts, go ahead and check out this video. I'll walk you through exactly what checking and saving accounts I recommend opening up and how to use them. Of course, if all of this budgeting advice sounds really, really good to you, but you are just having a really hard time pinpointing exactly what is going to work for you in your specific situation, you're in luck. We have personal finance coaches on standby, ready to help you. We will listen to your specific goals. We will listen to your specific needs and we will set you up with a plan that's going to be personalized to you and we will reach your goals faster than you ever thought possible. If that sounds good to you. Go ahead and schedule a call with one of our coaches using the link in the description box below. Thanks guys.